All right, welcome to the 10-Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil, and today we are going to go through mail merge, email merge, and Adobe merge. So if you want to send out custom communications using Word and Excel, this is how you do it. And also the Adobe one, if you have Adobe Pro, this is how you do that as well. So uh, what I'm going to use for my example is I'm going to use my church donor uh, record thing that I made for Google Drive. I'll put a link to that in the, the description. Um, it's really not made for this and, and you'll notice it's a little clunky, but what I wanna do is I wanna practice by sending out giving statements to each one of my, my pretend donors and I'll show you exactly how I would do that. Uh, again, mail merge is if you wanna print out a letter for every one of your uh, donors in this case. Email merge is if I want to send an email statement instead of a print statement, so instead of a paper statement. And then Adobe merge is if I want to send a PDF attached to an email to each one of my donors. So, all right, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so I started with my church donation uh, spreadsheet, and I wish I would have done this a little differently uh, thinking about the church statements now. I kind of made this for a really small church where maybe you were hand entering them but let's just say you had a a spreadsheet and it had all the different names of your donors here so right now i just have what is that seven and their total giving the amount of giving they were giving to each fund and then yeah and that's basically it so let's just start there so one of the first things you have to know about mail merge is that the data has to be in a very specific um, format. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you. I have a gift receipt. Let me pull this over to the side. I have a gift receipt template that uh, Bruce Bloomer and I created several, several years ago. And you can see these different highlighted ones. I, I like this dark format. Um, it on the white is really black and the yellow is really a normal yellow um but anyway let me go ahead and just change these so today is january 3rd 2024 uh your the name that's the name that you're going to input so what we would do is we'd want us to do a mail merge so we start here at mails uh mailings and one of the things that people sometimes do is they start here and i really don't like doing that what i like doing is starting here at select recipients and then the next one down is use an existing list so let's go ahead and do that and it always looks in this documents my data sources but you have to look at where you have this spreadsheet and i put this spreadsheet over here in my downloads and it's just church donations and it's gonna ask you which sheet to look for. And mine is this donor summary. See right here, donor summary. So that's the one I want. So let's go ahead and do that again. Use an existing list, Do downloads, and church donations, and donor summary. And now the cool thing about it is um, I'm gonna make this now, I think I'm fine like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight the name. And I'm going to insert merged field. So right here, insert merged field. And my the names correspond to... The names correspond to the, the different headers here. So donor. And then I'm going to get rid of that highlighting too. Um, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then I do want to put a comma afterwards. My church name, so that's just your, your church's name. So I'm just going to put in First Methodist Church. Um, you can change any of this up. The total amount given. So that's another one that we bring in. I'm going to just delete it. You don't have to replace it. I'm just going to delete it. That way it gets rid of the highlighting at the same time. Insert field. And I just want the total now. And it says uh, what time period. And it's saying 
January 1st, let me get rid of that bracket, uh, of 2022. So I want to change that to 23 through December 31st of 2023. And again, I want to get rid of the highlighting there. Um, kind of getting lazy on this. <laughs> Just highlight everything. And it has the, the standard tax reporting uh, language that you have to have for IRS purposes. And then uh, thank you and have a blessed, I'm going to change that to 2024. Maybe I'll use an exclamation point. This is your own name and own title of whoever wants to send this out. So it could be the chair of the finance committee. It could be the treasurer. It could be the pastor. It could be the chair of the board. I'm just going to say Jeff Pospisil, treasurer. So now the cool thing is here's the preview results button. And I'm going to show you what the difference is about formatting data. So if I leave it like this, you see how that turned my my number with the comma and the decimal points, it just turned it into a straight number. Um, it, it did show anonymous too. And you can actually see all of them. You can just keep going. Dear Dave Ramsey, dear Lawrence Welk, dear. But you can see all the numbers are not exactly what we want. So, and then there's a, some blank ones too. So you got to pay attention for that because I do have on this side, you can see all these blank ones. Um, so sometimes that happens. So let's, let me show you how to fix that. And I'm surprised it's letting me work in both of them at the same time. Normally it locks that up. So I'm going to actually close this. I'm going to, well, let's see, maybe it'll let me continue to do it. So you want to use the text function equals text, the value and then the format so you start with a quotation mark and what i want is i want the comma in there and i want the trailing zero so i want two decimal places so let's go ahead and you want to use number sign comma and this could be for any size number it could be a million dollars or you know uh, one dollar it doesn't make a difference but you do want just this basic format here number number and I, then I normally do 0.00. .00. So it'll always show those zeros if, if uh, so like let's say somebody gave 50 cents, it'll show 0 0.50. Or if somebody gave, uh, well, in this case, $8,290, it'll still show the trailing zeros. Then close with a quotation mark and then a close parenthesis. And there it is. So what I'm gonna do um, you could do a couple of things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag that down. You see, I drag it down for seven. I'm going to copy. And then I'm going to paste values. And now I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So by the way, th I would make this a copy of one. <laughs> I'm kind of messing with things as I'm going. And now let's go ahead and I'm going to save it. And I wonder if it messed with, um, I might have to reload this too. So I'm going to close this. And I am going to uh, save it. Okay, let's reopen it. You're normally not supposed to have both of them open at the same time. And I think that was what my issue was. Like I said, I was kind of surprised that it let me open it the first time. So you here you can go ahead and see we have 8,290 with the correct formatting. So again, that's where you want to turn your numbers into text. And that's the that's usually the best way to do it. Sometimes what I've done is I'm going to go ahead and close this. This is going to be the cruddy part because you really shouldn't have uh, both of them open at the same time. Normally you get a it'll warn you about having both of them open. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll add another column and maybe make it M total. And that would be my text function. So equals text and then type all that out. Uh, this one, I didn't do that. M standing for merged was what that was for. Okay, so that was the easy part. Um, let me show you well, there's probably a couple of other things. 
I, I'm debating on how much we want to want to wade into this. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this, uh, and let me show you if we want to add the breakdown of what they gave to. So I, I I like to do this. I like to let people know where they're at. So I'm going to just sort it from largest to smallest. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up making this fund one. So the first fund that they gave to. So let me go ahead. I'm going to actually convert all these to text first. So equals text. Boom. Format is number sign, number number, 0, 0.00. All right, so that's text. Might as well do that and get that over with before we get going too far. Go down to seven places, copy, paste values, values right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to how I would do it if I wanted to go ahead and do show a breakdown of funds that people gave to. So I'm going to start by saying this is fund one. Actually, I probably need more more room. Fund one, amount one, and then I want fund two, amount two, fund three, amount three. All right, so I need that much more room. Fund two, amount two, fund three, amount three. So you need enough columns for each fund, each amount. I'm going to go ahead and format it because that bothers the heck out of me. So I'm just going to highlight it, format painter, and then select everything. All right, now that looks a little better. Even though that doesn't make any difference, it makes a difference to me. So for the fund, the first fund, that's the general fund. Oops, control shift B. This is actually a, I'm going to, I'm going to turn that into, that was a formula before. So, all right, let me go ahead. That's general fund. This one doesn't have, they didn't give anything to that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that one for them. That's not really their first fund but it is for everybody else. Everybody else gave to the general fund. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that over there. So the I did the fund and then the amounts for each one of those. And now I can go ahead and delete this. I took care of that. Okay, now we have the second fund for all these except for this one. This is still this guy's first fund. So I'm gonna put missions here. And I'm going to paste that amount. And then, then I'm going to go ahead and delete it so I don't accidentally do something weird with that. So I'm going to go ahead and sort this again. And here we are. We have um, missions is the second fund for these individuals. And here's their amounts. And now we've already posted for everybody that gave to missions, right? So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But we have one individual that gave to all three funds. So we can see that here. So they gave also to this care and concern fund. So I'm going to copy that. And this seems pretty labor intensive. Actually, once you get going, it's, it's not that bad. And then we have these two individuals that this is their second fund. And then I'm going to copy their amounts as well. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. Um, but basically all I did is it should, everything should still add up. Uh, this person still has $125. This one's still 240. They gave to two funds, but basically if they gave to more than one fund, I just keep going down the line. I'm going to go ahead and save this now. And what I'm going to do is open up my giving statement again. It's going to say, do you want to, okay. And you should retain a copy of this for tax purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and switch it back away from the preview results. And then I'm going to say, add a new paragraph. Here is a breakdown 
of your giving. And I'm going to use a bullet list here. I'm going to go insert. And I'm going to go, I'm debating how I should have done this. So I think, yeah, we'll, we'll do it like this. A anyway, we'll see how that works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to mailing, insert, fund one, colon, space, and then insert amount one. And then I'm going to do fund two. And that colon and space is the part that's bothering me. So I think that's part I'll need to fix and I'll show you how to fix that in a second. Uh, and I'll show you why that's a problem also as well. Insert uh, amount two, then fund three, insert space and amount three. So now let's go to preview again. And everything should look good. So we're, here, we're on uh, the very first one happens to be now that I resorted it, Lawrence Welk. It shows his giving total and that he gave to general fund and missions. It shows for anonymous, which is one you probably wouldn't give out, but it shows the breakdown of the anonymous giving. It shows the breakdown of this individual for Joe Schmo. So everything looks pretty good. And actually, I think I'm fine with this. I thought I had to do something special. They, something must have changed um, because you used to have to go back and actually adjust for that. But doesn't that look nice? It, it changes the, it doesn't show the ones that are blank. So now let's get into the part where we actually do the mail merge. So there's two different ways to do this. So the first thing is um, there's only seven records. After that, they keep on going on and on and on, all the way down to 499. Um, why that is, is because I had this set up for 499 donors. Um, and anyway, it must still think there's something there. So let's just go ahead and go to finish, mail merge. And there's two ways to do this now. First one is the one I would normally do it. Um, I would go ahead and go to print documents. And I would say, because you remember it wants to do 499 of them, one to seven, and I would go ahead and hit okay. And it's just gonna send that to my printer and it's gonna print them all on a separate sheet of paper. So if I wanted, if I had letterhead, I'd go ahead and load in seven sheets of letterhead and go ahead and send it out. And by the way, I'd encourage you to, to actually sign this and maybe even put a little note next to some of them. So that's the first way, that mail merge is pretty easy. The second one, send email messages. So I'm going to show you the what I would normally do too. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I do this quite often. I think it's really slick. So let's go ahead and insert another one. So let's say, just say you had email address for some of your donors. Uh, and I'm going to add in uh, one of my own email addresses. Oops. <laughs> Jeff F. Pospisil. That's what happens when you get a long email address. And I wouldn't have one for that. And let's just say I have, I have a lot of email addresses at yahoo.com. And I have a hotmail address that shows you just how old I am.com. And then the last one, I'm just going to say Jeff at JCT accounting.com. Okay. So now what, now that I have that in there, so a lot of times if you had donor records, you would already have that information. And again, we're trying to go on the cheap. So if you had this in Excel or whatever software, will let you kick it out to Excel, but but you, it won't actually email it for you. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Go back to my giving statement. It's going to ask if I want to connect it, and I'm going to see yes. So it's just asking, can I still connect it back to that data file? So when I do this, when I do it with email, what I normally do is I go ahead and 
I go to send receive and I switch it to work offline. So send receive, work offline. And why do I do that? Because in case something goes wrong, I don't want to send about a bunch of messages to people that are incorrect and then have to send an, out another correction. I, I get kind of paranoid because I guess what? I've done it wrong before. I don't want to do it wrong again. So let's go to mailing, finish, send email messages to email address, subject line. 2023 giving statement, uh, first church or first Methodist church, something like that. Um, and again, I want to go from records one to seven. I don't know what it's going to do with those blank ones, but I'm going to find out. Sometimes you can filter it and I'll show you how to filter that in a second. All right. And now when you look in your sent items or outbox, it just picked up those ones that had those email addresses. So I'm going to go ahead and um, what I would normally do again is I would spot check it. How does it really look? So January 23rd. So because I didn't do this as a letter, one of the things I might do is get rid of that date. I, do I really need the date? So that date is kind of throwing things off. So let's go ahead and say, no, I don't want to do this. Since I did it offline, I can just go ahead and delete those. I could go ahead and remove this. And now, I can't remember if it picks up your signature or not. I think it probably will. I think I have a standard signature. So let's just go ahead and delete that. We'll find out in a second, won't we? So let's go ahead and finish. Send email messages. It saved what I just did last time. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And again, it'll, it'll take about, what was that, about a half a second per email to set up or per record. So here, that looks better. Dear Sally and James Stewart, and everything looks good. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit send. So it didn't go anything, but I needed, since I opened it up, I needed to hit send again. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually send it. And it'll take a second to cycle through everything. I could probably do a send receive all, but now they're starting to go. So that'll also take a little bit of time. And you're going to start seeing them popping up. I don't even know what I have in my email inbox. So this one came through right away. So here's my giving statement. Oh, and you see what? It didn't include my name. So I thought it was gonna pick up my standard uh, signature, but it didn't do that. So anyway, I, I, I don't know why I thought that. Um, I, I, one of the, my previous workplaces, it did. So that's another thing to learn is I would really want my name under there. So, okay. But either way, that's a quick way to do that. The other way to do that is maybe you want to send this as a letter. And if you have Adobe P uh, Pro, you can get that fairly cheap from, uh, from TechSoup. I, I can't, I want to say it's like $90. So, but that gets you free and clear. It's not $90 a year, it's just $90 straight. You could use it for as long as as long as it works, and it'll work for a long time for you. But I could go ahead and say merge to PDF. And again, I want to do my record range. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and fix that name thing first. So let's go ahead and I'm going to work offline again. And I'm going to put my name back in there. Maybe spell it correctly. Treasure. And now let's go ahead and hit merged PDF. So again, that's under the mailing, merged to PDF. It's going to say, what do I want? One, two, seven. And I'm just, and I'm going to say gift receipt. Actually, I like to put the underscore in there, receipt 2023. And I want it to automatically send the PDF files by email. So I don't want it to just create a bunch of them that I have to later 
send, I wanted to actually um, go ahead and send them out. So I'm going to pick email address is what I want it to do. First Methodist gift receipt, our gift, our giving statement. I can't remember what I called it. And I'll just put thank you. This is really small. I realize thank you for your generosity. Attached is your gift uh, receipt for tax purposes. So if I wanted to do this, if I wanted to make this that that Word document just kind of a plain Jane thing with just the amount, just the breakdown, I could actually put more of my um, the wording in here. Uh, but I would also make sure I still include that tax, uh, that IRS tax language is that no goods or services were uh, provided in return for your gift. And I'm going to put Jeff Bospisil. And I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit OK again. And it says that it found inconsistencies, blank records or emails. So this one it doesn't do. I don't think it did. It did not do it. So here's what you have to do. So what you would want to do is you would want to filter your, so if filter it and to do that, use an existing list. Oops, cancel. Edit recipient list, sorry, edit recipient list. And what I could do is say filter email address is not blank and you see it just got rid of all those so I, I like that too again if you wanted to just so if you wanted to go ahead and print the ones with email addresses you would just say is blank so that's how you change that filter there is you change that to is blank so you could email those ones that you have email addresses for and print the ones that you don't all right so now if we look at it we just have four records, total of four records. And now I can go ahead and merge to Adobe Pro. So I can go one to four. Giving statement, automatically send Adobe's via email. Email address is who to. First Methodist giving. And I'm not gonna write everything this time. I'm just gonna add my signature in there and go ahead and hit okay this time. And it's gonna ask, where do you wanna store these? Where do you actually wanna put them? And I'm gonna put them in, not there. Well, pick up, you just gotta pick a folder really. I'm gonna put them in my downloads. Um, that's good enough for me for now. But pick a folder where you'd wanna save them. That way, if somebody comes back to you, say they don't get it, you can, um, you can go ahead and pick it right out of that folder and get it for them. So now let's look at what those emails look like. So you see we have four in the outbox. And here it is. It just says very, very succinctly, First Method is giving. And, but here's their statement that is attached to it. And it's their statement. So if we look at it, Sally and James Stewart going to jeff at jctaccounting.com. So let's double check that real quick. I'm going to save this, close this, and open up my church donations. You see the giving statements right down here, by the way. So Sally and James Stewart, jeff at jctaccounting.com. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more confidence in that. And if everything looks good, I'm gonna go ahead and hit send. I'm going to go ahead and say, send them out. And when I look at it again, what you're going to see is that they should have gone through. Everything's got to update now. So boom, there it is. So there's my second giving statement. So again, it comes out like that. So if you do send it like a PDF, you see that it's not on the letterhead. So you can add your logo in here. You can add anything else. 
Uh, you can make it colorful. So that is the one of the nice things. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you can go ahead and add some graphics, uh, add a picture or something like that. That that could really help with things. So, but sometimes one of the cruddy things is sometimes these ones do end up going to your junk box. I'm going to see if they, well, actually this one came through. You see both of them came through. And let's look at JCT accounting. Well, at least uh, both of them came through here as well. So I guess maybe it went all right. Actually, the one I had the most trouble with with using the PDF one was Yahoo. All right, that brings us to the end. Hopefully you found that helpful. Um, I use this all the stinking time because, and not just for the stuff like this. I mean, I do use it for stuff like this, like donor statements. But if I ever want to do mass communication where I want to communicate to hundreds of people's specific amounts or specific things, um, and I don't have fancy software to do that for me, this is a slick way to do it. So hopefully you enjoy that. I will put links to that donor statement one. I don't know what that's worth. I'll put a link to my template. And I'll put a link to um, probably TechSoup, I guess. TechSoup would be a good one too, because again, you can get low cost Adobe Pro from TechSoup. Till next time, God bless you.